Welcome to our lecture online. Now, how do we graph ellipses? Well, let's start with a very simple example. So here we have the general format of the equation, but notice that h and k are zero, which means there's no offset. The center of the ellipse, if there's such a thing as the center ellipse, it's not going to be at the origin. It's going to, well, in this case, it's going to be at the origin. If we have it like this, then it's going to be offset from the origin. So we do want to find the central point or the center location of the ellipse, which is not exactly the center of the ellipse, of course. You can only have a center of a circle, but you can have the central point relative to an ellipse as well. All right, so if that's going to be at the origin, let's go ahead and put a point right at the origin. Then what we're going to do is we're going to let one of the two variables equal to zero. So let's say let y equal zero. When we do that, we end up with x squared over a squared is equal to 1, or we can write that x squared is equal to a squared. And if we take the square root of both sides, we can then say that x is equal to plus or minus a. Why plus or minus? Because in order to graph it, we have to include the positive and the negative answer of the square root. So when x is equal to plus a, that's this point right there. When x is equal to negative a, that's this point right there. Now we do the same, but we let the other variable be 0. So let x equal 0, which means that now we have y squared over b squared equals 1, or y squared equals to b squared. Take the square root of both sides, y is equal to plus or minus b. Again, we take the plus or minus because we need to have those both of the answers in order to graph it. So plus b would be right here, negative b would be right there. Now you can realize that depending upon the value for a and b, the shape of the ellipse is going to be different. So the shape of the ellipse is going to be determined by the values of a and b. And we have a few examples here where you can see how that works. Now we connect all those dots. You can see that when you connect them, you have something that looks like this, which indeed is an ellipse. Now let's do it with real numbers. So again, it looks exactly the same as before except instead of a we have 1, instead of b we have 5. And so we're going to let y equals 0, which means that x squared equals 1 squared, or x is equal to plus or minus 1. So we find those two locations, x is plus 1 is right here, x is minus 1 is right here. So that's how we get to two dots on the x-axis, where we know the ellipse is going to go to those two dots. Now we're going to let x equals 0, which means that y squared will equal 5 squared, or y will be equal to plus or minus 5. So from the origin, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. Let's call this dot 1. This is negative 1. And negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, right here. Then if we connect those dots, we can see that this is the, well, it didn't do a very good job here. Let's try a little bit better. There we go. Let's try a little bit better here. There we go, and there we are. All right, and there's the ellipse represented of that equation, representative of that equation, I should say. And now let's go to this one right here, but notice now we have an offset. The central point of the ellipse is no longer going to be at the origin. It's going to be shifted to the right by one, and up by 2. So the divide by 1 and up by 2, so that's 1 and 2, means the central point of the ellipse right there is going to be at that location. So everything is going to be relative to that location. So first we're going to let, well, let's see here. If we let y minus 2 equal 0, so let y minus 2. Mm, yeah, I have to be careful here in order to not confuse everybody. Since we already took care of the shift, we don't have to worry about what's inside the parentheses. So let me rewrite this here. So let y minus 2 equals 0. When we do that, we get x minus 1 quantity squared is equal to 4 squared, or the quantity x minus 1 is going to be plus or minus 4. Meaning from the offset point, I'm going to move four, four, uh, four units in the x-direction, in the positive x-direction, and four units in the negative x-direction. So one, two, three, four. I draw a dot there. 
I go one, two, three, four, and I draw a dot there. So it's going to be relative to the offset point. We do the same for x minus 1. So let x minus 1 equal 0. That means that x, that means that if x minus 1 is 0, then y minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 3 squared, or y minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 3. In other words, from the center location of the ellipse, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go down 3, let's put a dot there, 1, 2, 3, put another dot there. So when I connect those four dots, I have an ellipse that represents the equation on the board. And there you go. And that's how you draw an ellipse once you have the equation. So in this case, the easiest thing to do is to go ahead and find the offset point. It shifts one to the right and two up. That would be the central point of the location of the, of the ellipse. So that would be one comma two. And then using these points right here, if you let x equals zero, then y minus 2 squared equals 3 squared, or y minus 2 equals plus or minus 3. So that means that from the point here, I'm going to go up 3 and down 3. When we set y minus 2 equal to 0, then x minus 1 equals 4 squared, or x minus 1 equals plus or minus 4. And so from this location, you go 4 to the right and 4 to the left, put your points down, and then you connect the four dots, and that's how you graph your ellipse. It's the easiest way to graph the ellipse. You can, of course, work all this out and get rid of the minus 1 and plus 2 or minus 2 but that would be kind of messy algebraically doing it like this is a whole lot easier and that is how it's done why can't you just look at your equation is it that will be the center one two and know that the, that the x-axis is going to be uh, 4 up So you're right, what you could do is take a look at the general equation. The number underneath the x is that's the amount that you're going to move to the right and the left. The number underneath the y is the amount you're going to go up or down. So you can actually look at it that way. So you can say here, in the x direction we're going to move to the right and to the left four units. In the y direction we're going to move up and down three units. I just wanted to show you why that is so, but yeah, you could simply just simply grab the equation right here. In the x direction, you're going to move to the right and to the left four units. In the y direction, you're going to move up and down three units. And the offset is going to be at plus one and plus two for x and y. So find the offset and then add four and four on both sides, plus three and negative three and up and down. And yes, that's how you graph it. Do you want to do this for every one of them? No, I just want to show you once how to do that. From then on, we'll realize that that's how you do it. I just wanted to show the technique to, that's used to understand how to find those points on the end of the ellipse. Too much work? <laughs> well, at least you understand why, and the next time we can just do it much, much faster, much simpler.